Hi guys, they were taking a look at an ultra short throw projector. This is the JMGO 01. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. So we'll be setting it up, testing out some movies on this, and we'll also try some gaming out as well to see how well it performs. So let's begin by unboxing it and seeing what you get in the packaging. You get a power adapter, output on this is 19 volts, 4.7 amps, and it's a DC connector on this. Power input has this type of connector on there. This is the power cable, you can see the connector on there, and this isn't for the UK, but I've got a spare one, which I can use in place of this. You get a remote control, nice sleek design to it. Buttons feel good on here, and you've got controls at the side as well. It takes two AAA batteries, and then finally we've got the projector. Some controls here at the top. You've got the lens here. On the back, you've got an ethernet connection point. You've got optical out, two USB points, HDMI arc, HDMI and DC in for power. Underneath, you've got some rubber pads, avoid it slipping on a surface and a mount point if you wanted to put it onto a stand. That's what the front looks like and it has a quite a cool futuristic design to it. Let's get started with testing this projector out. So I've plugged in the DC power and I plugged in an ethernet cable as well. And just to note, it does support Wi-Fi connectivity. Powering the projector on is easy. There's a button just over here, pressing that once. Measuring sound levels from the projector, about 49 decibels. So it's not too loud. It's just a silent hum coming through there. The projector is approximately 12 inches away from the wall. With that distance from the wall, we're getting approximately 84 inches projected onto a wall. And picture quality you can see straight off with the user interface running is pretty good. The OS on here is Luna OS. And considering the blinds are open in the room, we're getting a lot of light coming through and doesn't impact the picture quality in any way. You can still see it pretty clearly coming through. Obviously outside it's not sunny, it's overcast at the moment, but even with the natural light coming in, picture clarity is very good. The projector does have automatic keystone correction. So if I make an adjustment, there you go, it tries to straighten out the image. And the advantage of this is there's no messing around. It just automatically places it in the correct position, which is flat to the wall. Obviously you can override that and do the keystone correction yourself manually. Now placing the projector at an angle, deflection is too large, it's said. So you can't do it if the deflection is too much. If I turn it slightly, now that's not too bad. So it manages to adjust it if it's slightly off as well. I've plugged in both my Xbox and my Amazon Fire Stick into the device. And what happens, you get a preview on the screen and you can see the selection on the HDMI. If I go over to HDMI 2, that's where the Fire Stick's connected and it gives you a quick preview and the ability to select between the two. Now I've got the blinds open in the room and streaming a video on YouTube. You can see for yourself, it's not too bad. Obviously it's overcast at the moment, so there's not sun coming into the room. So you can see the picture pretty clear. I've closed all the blinds in the room now, and there you go. No surprise, works pretty well. Picture quality isn't bad at all with this. And now with the lights on in the room, you can see for yourself, picture quality is a little bit washed out, but you can still make out what's going on there. So not too bad, even with the lights on. Now trying out some gaming here on the projector. Seems to work generally quite well. Didn't see it struggling in any way. Obviously it's a 1080p projector, can handle up to 60 Hertz on here. So if you did have one of the next gen gaming consoles, isn't really gonna make the most of it, but still works pretty well regardless. And the input lag on this isn't bad either. Let's do a comparison with my LG OLED C1 TV and the projector projecting onto an ALR screen. And an ALR screen, avoids reflections from different light sources to give the optimum picture quality. You can see for yourself, there's no comparison between the two as the OLED has far superior color quality on there. But it's good to show this as an example to what to expect. But obviously if I went for a 100 inch TV, it's not gonna cost me the price this projector's costing me. But obviously there is a compromise there. You're not gonna get the superior quality an OLED gives. But nevertheless, it's not too bad for what you're seeing. And again, gives you an idea of what it's like with a projector screen in use. Picture quality in general isn't too bad with it. I'd say it would be more aimed at the budget range. Let me show you around the interface on the projector. So going into settings, first of all, we've got Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, so you can connect Bluetooth devices to it and you can connect to a Wi-Fi network. Now, the reason I didn't connect to my Wi-Fi network is the number of characters this supports in the Wi-Fi password 
was a little bit too short for me to enter in my Wi-Fi password. And because of that, I've just plugged in the ethernet cable. It's not the end of the world, but I didn't want to go around changing the password on my other devices as I'm just testing this. Then you've got source signal. Obviously there's two HDMI ports on this and you've got HDMI CES and that allows you to interact with other devices. So if you had a sound bar plugged into this and you turned on the projector, you can get that sound bar automatically turning on. Going over to color range, back from there, startup source, local, and if I go into there, you can change what the initial startup source is. Local being the local interface here, but I can have it direct into HDMI one or two, for instance, if I had a fire stick plugged into it. Back from here, back again. Then we've got audio settings. So as you're moving around, every time you're pressing a key, you're getting a sound coming from this. It's a key press sound, you can turn that off. SP diff delay, so that's the optical input cable. So it's nice you can plug in an optical cable if you wanted the device plugged into an external amplifier, for instance, but it does have HDMI eARC, which can redirect sound to a soundbar too. Audio output, looking in here, you've got the different options available. Back from there, audio mode, standard music, cinema, and sports. Now the speakers on here are pretty good. They're seven watt speakers and quality is pretty impressive from this. Let's measure sound levels from the projector. I've turned up the volume to maximum. We got about 88 decibels at maximum. There was no distortion and sound quality was good. Projection settings, there's an eye protection mode. And what that does, if there's anything interfering with the projection, so if you've come into its range, it'll actually cut out the projector to avoid any sort of damage it could cause to your eyes from that. Brightness level set to the highest level. Back from there, low blue light mode, turning that on. See the impact that has, so blue light filter is available on this. Auto keystone correction, I've shown that in action, works pretty well. Manual keystone correction, so if you wanted to make some adjustments yourself, you can go in there. Intelligent image flattening, and this is where you use their app to improve the image quality. Then you've got digital zoom and just showing it's at the maximum at the moment. Can take it down, but let's ramp it up and keep it at the maximum. Back from there, autofocus, and that retains clarity in real time. Autofocus calibration and aspect ratio, 16 by nine and four by three. Projection mode, so going in there, frontal, rear, front ceiling and rear ceiling. Back from here, then we've got video settings. So at the moment, image mode is standard. They're the different options you have. Image noise reduction, set to high, but you can turn that off. Low latency mode, and you turn this on when you're doing any gaming with this. Motion compensation, and that assists with any sort of fast motion you've got going on. HDR, I've turned it off because what I've noticed, if you've got it on, brightness level's a bit lower. Now, this is a 1080p projector, and it can support 60 hertz and lumen levels are 800 on there. So they're not the highest you can get out there, but as you can see, it's not too bad for what you're getting. Color temperature set to standard at the moment. You've got two other ones, subtle changes with these, so cold and warm, and then back from there. Wall color calibration, if I turn that on. Okay, it tries to do a color calibration with the color you've got on the wall. So my wall is just plain white. Then we've got advanced settings. You've got fan in here. And at the moment, it's set to automatic. If you set it to full speed, noise levels go very loud with this. Now just measuring the sound levels, it's about 54 decibels. No need to leave it on that. I think it's fine just to have it on automatic. Indicator control, and if the top LED light was bugging you, you can turn that off. Time shutdown, so you can have it automatically shutting down after a certain period. Back from here, system settings, just basic bits and pieces in here. Back from there, and then if we come along, we've got App Store. This is what's quite good about the device. It's got its own App Store with the standard sort of apps you're looking to use on this. And as you can see, standard stuff here, Netflix, Prime Video coming along, YouTube as well. Lots and lots of apps on here. 
So in summary, for an ultra short throw projector, this isn't too bad, giving you 80 to 100 inches on your display, with the projector just being 10 to 12 inches away from the wall. So this not only gives a great immersive experience for gaming, but as an ultra short throw projector, it's space saving as well. So you don't need a large room to set it up, giving you the space for your gaming setup needs or even for movie nights. With it being so compact and lightweight, weighing in at just five pounds means it's perfect if you wanted to take it over to a friend's house or even on holiday to watch movies with. Sound quality was pretty good from the Dyna audio with the sound coming from the same direction as the image, plus with a decent stereo effects and barely audible noise from the fan, so you're less likely to be distracted when gaming. The native 1080p resolution at 60 hertz performed well when gaming, plus with the additional feature of low blue light mode, gives you the option to provide the images that are slightly more friendlier to your eyes. Negatives wise, I felt the brightness level did feel a little bit low at 800 ANSI lumens together with the color and contrast levels and it would definitely struggle in a bright lit room so definitely worth investing in a good projector screen if you're buying this but really that's the reason why they've managed to keep the price so low hence why this comes in at the budget end of the ultra short throw projector market and it's not too bad for the money if you had a limited budget. So there you go. You made it to an end of another video and I hope it's helped anyone thinking of purchasing this. Details are in the description below, including purchasing links. If you're new to the channel, I hope you can support me by subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to get notified of my next release. Thanks for viewing and see you in the next one.